welcome to tonight's matchup, MCTV. My name is Chris Shelb, and I'm here with uh, uh, my fellow commentator, Rob Martin. Rod Martin. Uh, we're going to cover the Saginaw Valley meet between the hosting Midland Chemists and uh, the visiting Dow Chargers. Uh, tonight, the Chargers are coming into tonight's meet with a 9 and 10 record, and the Chemists have an 8 to 3 record and a 6 and 0. Oh, um, a valley record. Um, Rob, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, welcome, viewers. Uh, I'm here with my friend Chris Shell. We're both wrestling aficionados and uh, going to enjoy this crosstown rivalry tonight. As you mentioned, Chris, both teams are coming in with good records. Uh, Dow at 9 and 10, and then Midland with an excellent record at 8 and 3. I think this is going to be a very competitive matchup tonight, and looking forward to uh, some very crucial uh, matches. Yeah, we, sh we should have uh, edge of our seat excitement tonight. Um, we're going to start the ground running right in those middle, middle weight classes, and it's just going to be nonstop action. Um, it should be a really good matchup between both teams. Uh, great coaching staffs. Just, just it's it's going to be a really fun night. Um, some some past history. Uh, before this duel, Midland High actually faced John Glenn and Clint Powers last Wednesday. Um, they also attended the Warren Fitzgerald Invitational last past weekend. Dow's High last opponent was the Saginaw to be Saginaw High and Flint combination, but unfortunately, due to a weather event, that was actually rescheduled, or hopefully it will be rescheduled. Yes, I know Dennis is working on that, Coach Doyle. Western Warriors and your Midland Chemics. Yes, I know. Sportsmanship is not just a necessary part of high school athletics. We'll pause for a moment while we listen to the announcer. School sports exist. The educational value of this contest is more important than its outcome. Midland High School asks that you please promote the values of educational athletics by showing respect and sportsmanship throughout the evening. Welcome to our senior night. We will be recognizing our special guests between our doors. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to provide our national anthem tonight, the Midland High School Meister Singers. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you stand the privilege of this game was made possible by those who have fought and those that continue to fight for the freedoms we enjoy. Let us honor and respect their efforts and our country by gentlemen removing their caps. Veterans and service members not in uniform may render the military salute, and everyone standing at the attention and placing their hands over their hearts as we proudly sing our national anthem. Captains, come on no. out. And for Dow, we've got.
Looks like Coach Donovan's getting his guys pumped up. Yeah, definitely. I was going to mention the... Uh, Captains are shaking hands. For Dow, we've got Sam Martin, Brennan Doyle, Dustin Fletcher, and Brent Booth. And for Midland, we have Matt Ware and Mateo Diaz. Okay, looks like we're ready to get going here. All, all six of those captains out there are excellent wrestlers and will play very much into how things go tonight. Oh yeah, they're for definitely leaders on each squad. Yep. And as you mentioned, we're starting out at one, the weight class 145. Yep. Uh, Jacob Gamola is actually, uh, we're assuming he's going to be brought out by Midland, and he is a senior this year with a record of 17 and 6. Um, he also plays football, uh, he runs track, he has played baseball for a couple years. Um, he, he, very good athlete as well as uh, definitely academic. He hopefully maybe will go to Ferris State next okay. year and get into yeah. welding and engineering. Outstanding young man. And for Dow, we've got Justin Liakos. He is a senior. Uh, he's wrestled four years for Dow High. Um, has a long background in, in wrestling. He's coming off an injury. Uh, he's been back for about a week and a half for Dow. So here we get ready to go. You know, both of these athletes here uh, have, have had youth experience. So. Um, their matchup, this should be an excellent matchup. Uh, just a lot of hand fighting, yeah. heavy on the head. Justin is a very strong nice. wrestler. Nice slide by attempt. Uh, no. Jacob's got a front headlock. Looks like Justin's trying to peel those hands yep. and get out of that headlock. And like every coach will tell you, I'm sure the number one line of defense is your hands. Right. Both of these wrestlers are gonna have to stay active, really after and get after that shot. They're doing a good job of staying in the center of the mat. Okay, and okay, there we go, Justin with the takedown for two. And put out of bounds. So Jacob will start down. Bottom man's really got to explode. And Matt return. Dow's trying to work on hand control. As I mentioned, Justin's coming off an injury, but he looks like he's perfectly healthy now. Yeah, he does look strong, he looks good. These are both strong kids. Jacob's to his feet, and turn and one for an escape. So we've got a 2-1 score with 16 seconds left in the first period. He's in on a takedown, and two for Midland. Nice quick takedown by Jacob. Uh, that's good heads up with just a few seconds left in the period to, to be aggressive like that. Yeah, I think that's what each team is gonna have to do to be successful yep. tonight. So we've got three to two with Jacob Gamola on top going into the second period. Jacob Gamola started wrestling in seventh grade. He did the uh, My Way League as well as the Nemla League. That's really kind of what sparked his interest in wrestling. Okay. Justin wrestled in Nemwa uh, starting in eighth grade. And wrestled uh, also for Jefferson Middle School then. 
One point escape for Dow. So we've got a 4-2 score right now, Gamola leading. Justin's gonna to wanna to be more aware now uh, after Jacob had that quick takedown at the end of that first period. Yep, yeah, both wrestlers, they, they're, they're keeping very active. Shot attempt again, nice. and another two takedown for Jacob Gamela. Jacob's always been a quick wrestler, and those are, he's had a couple of very nice takedowns. Indeed, that's one of his strengths, is his speed. I believe Jacob was an all-SVL honorable mention in football, was he? Yes, he was. He was SVL All-American both on the wrestling team as well as the football team. He's a three-year honor roll student. Okay. And Justin as well, the last couple of years at Dow, was on the academic all-state team. And he intends to go to Michigan Tech in the fall. Excellent. Just a little over halfway in this period. Both wrestlers trying to position themselves to get a, create an angle. Controlling the head by Dow. Shot attempt by Midland, defended well by Jacob. Or, excuse me, Justin. Justin's got that uh, wizard in, trying to keep that Jacob from getting the takedown. No points yet. Nothing's been awarded. Nothing yet. And this could be could be a two takedown. There's a two for, for Jacob. Jacob Camula. That makes it eight to three. Eight to three, correct. In the second period. Well, now we'll see what Coach Mike does for Jacob. If With Justin being down five points, I'm sure uh, Coach Doyle is letting him know that he may have to try a few things here. Yeah. He can't play it safe being five points down. Yeah. He's going to really have to explode up, get to his feet. If he could come up with a five-point move, that would even be better. We have a caution on Jacob, Camola, Midland High. Showing some more of that quickness. <laughs> Justin trying to hit a switch there. He's got a good spiral ride in right at the moment. Still working that thigh pry. He's got an arm bar now. Justin trying to get to his feet. And he's on his feet. Jacob does a good job of staying with him, yep. keeping him on the mat. And that's no easy task. Justin's a strong kid. I believe his, he's a farmer by trade, so. Yep. You're right, I'm sure he works hard on every day. Kamal's just got a leg in. Yep. Looks like he's looking for a guillotine. Well, maybe not. Justin wants to try to get that leg out of that leg. That spells trouble if that top wrestler sinks that leg in. Uh, stalemate. We'll go back to our base, uh, neutral, no, base position, excuse me. <laughs> And we're about halfway through the third period here with a score of eight to three to uh, Amola on top. Amola just opted to let Jacob, or Justin back up to his feet, so now the score is four to eight. And Justin's gonna have to initiate something here very soon with time ticking down. Yeah. Amola was in on a shot attempt again. He's in good position if he can finish here. Good defense by Dow. Hand fighting, jockeying position. Uh, 
Jacob Schaub, it looks like he's losing a little, little gas in his tank there. He's staying good and aggressive though in this, in this match. We got about 15 seconds left. Justin's gonna have to try something. Jacob's quick, it's hard to get much on him. Uh, both shots, a uh, shot and a reshot attempt. Justin's in on a single leg and time has expired. Okay, good close match there. So, first match of the chess match tonight. Midland did end up with a victory. So Midland gets the decision and scores three points in the team duel. Yes. Okay, we got a good one coming up here. Yep. This will be one of the highlight matches of this evening. These two guys had three very close matches last year. They both have I've seen each other in the past. This will be nonetheless like, like all the rest. Matthew Ware against Sam Martin. Um, Matthew Ware is a, is, a, is a senior this year with a record of 33 and 15 for last year's record. He's got quite an accolade of, uh, on his, his resume here. He was a Sag Swan Valley uh, Saginaw League placer as, as second in, at 140 last year. He was a regional qualifier, took fifth, and his goal this year is to become a state qualifier. Both of these wrestlers are very accomplished wrestlers. Both kids that I expect to see do well in the postseason. Yeah, this could be a very tentative match just because of the way they know each other. Yes. Or it's going to be the complete opposite of that, and they're just going to go out and get it. Yep. Matt Ware is in on a single. And we do have a takedown. Mm -hmm. Sam is great at getting back to his feet, so Matt's gonna have to earn every point he gets. So Ware's on top two to nothing with a 122 in the first. He's trying a lat whip, nice switch by Dow. And Matt defended it, but he's, Sam is still on his feet. If he can turn and get away, then we're... Trying to get one point out of it if he can. Matt doing a good job of hanging with him. Matt's still in the top position. And a switch again, attempt. He's trying to, the key is he's got to get hand control, get to his feet, and then create some separation, which is right there. So now we're looking at a two to one. Two to one, and there's about 50 seconds left in the first period. Matt's really controlling Sam's left arm. I know Matt likes that Russian. It looks like he's working on that right now. They got good, hey, good head placement. It's both the mm -hmm. forehead to forehead. Just did it ear to ear. Slight shot attempt by Sam. Defended. Now Matt's in on that Russian. Shot. Nothing either way on that. 20 seconds left in the first period. Both wrestlers doing a great job of keeping hand control. It's a really exciting match. This is this this could really get the get each team up and going to yep. get some momentum. This, so far this is what we were expecting with this one. They had Three matches last year, each one uh, within two points. Oh, wow. So these two know each other and they always wrestle close. Matt Ware is uh, hopefully going to pursue uh, engineering at the University of Michigan. His brother is attending there too, who is a past red Midland Chemic wrestler. Sam's got the leg in. That's kind of his. Thing. He likes to get the leg in when he's on top. Well, he's so good with it. He's so lengthy. That's, that's such an effective tool in his toolbox. He's got hand control. Still has a leg in. And that's a strong kid. He's got him extended. He's got Matt extended. 
That'll be a tough one to get. Still, still being very strong on still top. Still keeping that leg in. Matt's trying to tripod up, get his legs free, come out the back door. We're about halfway through the second period. We've still got a 2-1 score. Sam's working to look, try to get a, maybe a power half. He's got a half in and a crab ride. He's doing a very good job of riding this whole period out. We got 33 seconds left. We still have a 2 1 score. This is what we were expecting. Back to the center of the mat. Matt wears down in his base position. I would look for Sam to throw that leg right back in. Yep. And Matt will try to stop it. Matt's on his feet. And great Matt return. He's got that two on one. Try to turn into him. Face. Okay, there's one point for wear, so that makes it a 3-1 match with 11 seconds left. In the second match in on a single, looking to switch to a double. You can step over that leg. And Matt managed, managed to get that two in with a couple seconds left. So we're going into the third period with a 5-1 score. Uh, by no means is this match completely over. Sam's just going to have to pick it up a little bit. Matt did a good job of getting that score late in the second period. A good Matt awareness, good time awareness. Dow chose down, which is the smart move. Sam's on his feet. Looking to uh, Sam is looking to try to either roll him so we can get some kind of escape or a reversal. Looks like he's going to. There's the reversal. reversal right okay, there. so we got a five to three score with a minute 30 left, and Sam's going to have to try to go to work on top. He's got that leg in. Still on top, riding nicely. Sam again with, with getting that leg in there. That's, that's so helpful when you're long. You have to use to, the advantages that you have. Yep, trying to stretch Matt out. He's getting down, there's under one minute, so he's got to do something here to he may get, be getting to a point where he's going to have to let him up and go for a takedown. Yep. That's... Matt needs to be aware of what's going on, but he, he really just needs to stay active. So 34 seconds left. We got a two point match. And I would look for Coach Doyle telling Sam to, to cut him here pretty yep. quick. There's a caution on Sam, starting a little early. Yeah, he's probably going to need to cut him pretty quick here if he can't turn him. So he's trying an arm chop, Matt's to his feet, going back to the legs. Looks like Sam's going to try to stay with that top stuff. That leg ride, I'm, yep. surprised, I'm surprised he's not cutting him. He's pretty high right and now. And that, yep, he got too high. And we're in a bundle situation, getting near foul established points. The ref has counted. Seven seconds. We'll see. He was looking for the pin. Could not get the pin, but he did get near foul status. Nice job by Matt. Sam yeah. got a little high there, and Matt took advantage of it. Yeah, yeah you know, in, in all these matches, just one little mistake sometimes can really make a difference. Yep. However, it was a great match between both teams. All right, next we're going to have... 160, and it looks like we will have. Looks like they're sending Brennan Doyle out from Dow. I thought they might send him out at 71, and but 
And we're still waiting to see who Midland Chemics are sending out. It's either going to be Theo. We're still waiting for a decision, just not 100% sure. And Midland got the decision on that last one to get three more team points, so we've got a six to nothing score right now. Chemex ahead. Yeah, maybe this would be a great opportunity to talk about um, like team scoring and how this is established. You know, um, it, for a win, it, it, you, you do get points and it depends. Look at this, this might be a real strategic move here by, okay. by Midland. So right. they're gonna scratch against Brennan Doyle, who is a ranked wrestler. Wow, that's kind of shocking. But you know, this is, this is all strategic, looking for points. Right. Um, we thought that was gonna be a real great match tonight, and uh, that's was, just not gonna happen. Right. I was not expecting that. No, I don't think anybody was. So that'll even the score at six to six. Okay. Six points for a uh, avoided pin or, a, or uh -huh. avoided victory. Yeah. That's what that would get. Okay, and here's, a, I didn't expect this. They're uh -huh. bringing uh, Dustin Fletcher out. Yeah. At 171, and then. And we have Theo Ramiti, who is uh, is kind of new to the sport. Okay. And they're gonna. It looks like they're gonna bump Sam Hine up then to the next weight. Okay. Yeah. So some more strategy going on here between the two coaches. Absolutely. You just never know what the coaches are thinking. Dustin is a senior a four-year varsity wrestler for Dow. Dustin's got a lot of youth experience. He's really turned it on. He's looking great, solid. Very accomplished wrestler. And he nice high gets crotch. in there with a... Oh, oh doesn't get... Nicely. Nice, nice defense wow. by... Th yeah. That was great. Still. Dustin comes into this match at 24 wins and four losses, so he has had a lot of success this year. Yeah. I'm assuming his goal is to definitely make it to the final, uh, at least somewhere getting past districts and through yep. regionals. And if he can make it to the state meet, that would probably be his ultimate goal this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. I do know Dustin has been accepted to go to University of Michigan. Yes, very, very bright kid. He is a National Honor Society student. Looks like we have uh, blood time. Some blood time, yeah, okay. So they'll check the mat just to make sure that there's no blood and clean that up. They always want to keep uh, injuries healthy, uh, excuse me, athletes athletes from getting right. any kind of blood bath, blood-borne pathogens. All right. You are watching this wrestling meet on the MCTV network, Charter Spectrum channels 188 through 191 in Midland. You can also find MCTV channels under channel 99 on AT&T UVerse. This meet will be cable cast on the following channels, dates, and times. Channel 189 on Thursday, January 11th at 8 p.m. Channel 190, Friday, January 12th at 6 p.m. Channel 190 on Saturday, January 13th at both 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. Future dates and times will be available on MPS TV channel 190. Check the Midland Public Schools website at www.midlandps.org or the Sunday edition of the Midland Daily News for more playback times. So back to the action. Back to the action. I was just about a minute into that first period. Still no score, 0-0. Zero, zero. Shot attempt by Theo. Nice sprawl. Looks like Dustin's trying to get a cradle Locked wrapped up. up and Some good position. On boy, that. that's looks oh. nice job of Theo fighting yeah. that off. Looks like out of bounds, so we'll go back to the center and Theo will be down. Yeah. 
And Dustin Fletcher leading at this point four to zero. 32 seconds left in the first period. Again, Theo does not have a lot of pass wrestling experience. Um, new to this court, but he is definitely giving his 100% every time he's hitting the mat. Absolutely. Just some of that inexperience, certainly when you're coming up a competitor against Dustin Fletcher, it's, it's hard to overcome. This. It really is. Nelson's got a leg in. Looking for a guillotine, he's got to be careful with this. We can, we can have wrestlers get injured, and we can right. have that to happen. We're going to do some back points here. Here's five points, he's looking for the pin. Really cranking the head, and time has expired. Good job by Theo fighting off that pin. Dial choice. He's going into the second period, he's going to defer, and Midland chooses down. Dustin Fletcher ahead seven to zero going into the second. Crunch, he's got his leg back in. I bet you he's gonna go right back to that guillotine that worked so well for him before. And he is. Yep, looks like that's what he's gonna work on again. All right, way to get your hip down. And he's trying to turn. Yeah. Looks like he could. It's not quite getting his ex back exposed past that 90 degrees. Now his there breath is go. coming. It was only a one count. He's got to get a. Now he's counting again. Okay, there we go. Certainly getting near foul points. It's very close to a pin, but Theo is fighting admirably. Now we're in a Michigan position. This really hurts that wrestler in the pin position. There's a lot of time on the clock, and boy, that is not a comfortable, not a comfortable place to be. No. The only thing Dustin could do a little bit better would be to extend his arms, maybe put his chin. Theo, as as a as a Midland wrestler here, there's really not much you can do. Um, you can do your best to try to All get right. back to your stomach. Dustin's gonna. You sat a little bit there, and now he's looking to get a half, reverse half. That was a great job of defending that off. Absolutely. So Dustin got a three count, so we're looking at 10 to zero. 20 seconds left in the second period. Still at a 90 degree. Dustin trying to get some more back points, but didn't quite get him over. Still has that arm trapped. Dustin doing a great job of riding this period. Kyle's going to choose top. And the crowd in the gym is starting to get pumped up, as they should on a crosstown rivalry like this. Yeah, we've got a good attendance. Midland will be facing the uh, Bay County right after this match. So Midland's got a tough night all night. Absolutely. And that could be some of the strategic game tonight is to maybe save their wrestler or uh, for their next match. Right, because Western's got a very good club as well. All right, Theo got a one point escape. We're on our feet, 10 to one. Still in a neutral position. Theo's doing a fantastic job in this. There's a low ankle right off the whistle. That's that an experienced shot. wrestler. Yeah, very nice shot. He's working that power half again. Got plenty of time to turn him over to his back. He is getting near foul points. And switch sides. He's getting that in pretty tight again. Got a minute left in this period. He's getting some back points now. 
Nadal team bench is calling for the pin. Let's see if Fletcher Dustin can get it. Still a lot of time to fight this off. There. Oh, he did. He got the pin. Oh, six points for Dow. That was a really nice job by Theo, uh, who doesn't have a lot of mad experience against a, a young man who's been wrestling since first grade. So, Yeah, that's a tough one, tough one. All right, looks like our next match is going to be Sam Hine for the Midland Chemics. And, and I believe it'll be John O'Connor. Sam is a junior this year. His uh, record last year was 38 and 12. He placed third at the Saginaw Valley. He also plays football for the Chemex. He's also a uh, Saginaw Valley League All Academic Honors. And he's been wrestling since fifth grade. A lot of experience in the youth program. Very good wrestler, Sam is. John O'Connor is the Dow wrestler. This is his first year of varsity. He's wrestled JV for a couple of years. Sam Hine, lo Sam Hine loves this Russian position. He loves getting into it. He's very comfortable there. You have a lot of options with it. Sam is very strong. Close to having a takedown on John. And two mm. points for Sam Hine. Sam Hine is also he has uh, the the luxury. If, if I don't know if, if if you'd ask Sam that, but his brother Jacob, who is a past wrestler, chemic wrestler, is uh, providing assistance and coaching on the team right now. So keeping it in the family. Sam yep. has a younger brother who wrestles youth as well. Correct, and uh, he will, he will, you'll certainly see John Hine on the mat doing great things in the future too. Another takedown for Sam Hine. John O'Connor is a defensive lineman on the uh, Dow football team. The chemic philosophy is, uh, uh, according to Coach Mike, is he really, he likes takedowns, so. I could see him telling Sam to cut him and then go for some go more for another takedown. Take sure. Yeah. He's in on a single again. He's reaching for the double. Trying to keep those feet and in. Does he get them awarded or out of bounds? Out of bounds on that. John trying to flee the mat as he's getting before he gets taken down. John's a very active student. He's in the band uh, on the drum line, and he also is working uh, towards an Eagle Scout. Excellent, good for him. So a very active student. Well, wrestling is certainly a time commitment, and uh, anybody who's ever done the sport knows that this is a very difficult sport. You put a lot of time, effort, your weekends are packed, your, your weekdays. So you really have to have good time management. Sam's riding nicely, looking for a half, maybe a half and an arm bar. Looking to get a hammer lock right at the moment. Comes back John's behind. trying to fight that off. Still has that wrist, that left wrist. We're down to about five seconds in the first period. John's going to try not to get turned to his back. And it looks like he'll do it. So we've got a four to one score. One into the second period. Sam Hine leading John O'Connor. And Midland to first, to Dow. Dow chose down. So that bottom man's really got to explode up. Sam has trapped that wrist. John trying to get to his feet. He's got two on one. John trying to peel Sam's hands. Well, he's doing a good job of hand control, defending that well. So John is off and gets the one for an escape. Well done by Dow. Sam right back in, heavy on the head. 
Now he's just got to do a spin drill to get behind to establish two points. Right on the edge of the mat. It'll be interesting to see if he can keep him in. John actually not doing a bad job of hanging on to that leg. There Sam gets the two. Somewhat similar to our last match here, we've got uh, a kid in Sam Hine who's a very accomplished wrestler, and John doesn't have a ton of experience, but he's hanging in pretty well with Sam. He's doing a very good job. And we're out of bounds. We'll go back to a neutral position. Mike wants, Coach Mike wants neutral. And you can see the strategy there. He, he Sam was doing a pretty good job of getting those takedowns, so. Makes, makes sense. So we've got a score of six to three, Sam Hine. About 40 seconds left in the second period. Shot attempt by Dow. Oh. And two more points for Edwin Chemex. Out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Not a bad job. I thought John might roll through on that. But Sam ended up getting the two. And we're going to give Dow an additional point to go back on our feet. Sam back in on that rushing position. Headlock attempt. Uh-oh. That's a tough, that's it's a tough, tough to one. Yeah, 10 seconds left and yep. the of the pitch. Awful hard to fight that off with a kid as strong as Sam Hine. Well, as the matches continue, now we're looking back to a 12-12 uh, team score. Now we will be moving on. 215. 215. And this is another place where I'm not sure where who Dow's gonna send out at 215. Okay, so Dow is going to go with the, the Chemex. They've sent out Jalen. And Xavier, this is his very first varsity match. This is a surprise move by Dow. Okay. Jalen is a, is a 12th grader this year. He had an eight and 11 record last year. Okay. And as I mentioned, Xavier, this is his, he is a freshman. This is his very first varsity match. That's excellent. Looks like Jalen got a leg in. He's got a nice half here. Yeah. Xavier's going to need to peel that hand away. He's still working well. Maintaining that top position. Looking to get him flat. Still riding in that top position. We're about halfway through the first period. Xavier needs to peel that hand or he's gonna get turned over. Yeah. Oh, a little scramble. And back into almost the exact position we were in. Looking for a power half. Nice job of Xavier getting out of that. I looked for a second there like Jalen had him in a pin move. Was well, certainly in a superior position. Xavier is a lineman both ways, or was this year on the freshman football team. Tim's got a nice hammer lock. He can use this to his advantage. And trying to turn him over. There's short. Cummings uh, come away with the pin there. Nice Team. job by Jalen. He kept working on that and finally got it. Team score now, 18 to 12, led by the Chemex. Now we'll have 
the big guys coming out yeah. at heavyweight. Our, our 285ers. J.R. Allen. Excuse me, R.J. And then we've He's got a senior. Um, he, uh, he has a record of nine and six. Definitely likes football. Definitely got the build for it. Yeah. And we've got Brent Booth for Dow. He typically wrestles 215, but wrestling up for this match. And he is a, he is state ranked at 215 with a record of 22 and two this year. Yeah, Brent's got a lot of credentials. He's, he's been wrestling for a long time. He does a lot of wrestling year round. He went to Fargo Nationals for the last two years. So he's it's a very competitive tournament. RJ has some experience from middle school, but then kind of separated from the sport and now is, uh, has been recruited back in and he's actually doing a very good job for the, for, for the Chemex. They were lacking in that 250 or that 285 weight class and he's stepped up and taken that role and done a very good job with it. I think his future plans are to, to go into the military, so. Outstanding. Brent is looking at going to Ohio Northern University, both for academics and wrestling. Still no score. On our feet, 0-0. Zero, zero. Looks like RJ was trying to get that rush, huh? Yeah. Sometimes those simple little mistakes. Brent is a kid who likes to wear his opponents down. As we get to these heavier weights, yeah, that's, it's usually a, a matter of how much is in the gas tank. Brent is actually coming on up on a couple of really nice milestones. He's actually seven wins away from 150 career wins. That's fantastic. And he's nine pins away from having 100 pins for his career, which is really impressive. Yeah. Those stats, those, those are impressive stats by any means. Uh, the decision is to the Chemex, they defer, and Dow chose us down. That bottom position is, uh, is usually good wrestlers take that. But they know that they can usually try to get it an escape point. But this, the heavyweights, that's an awful lot of weight to have to get up on, though. That is true. <laughs> and we're this off the map. Bryant gets the reversal, kept his feet in. Bounds, and we saw that with Sam Hines several times in his match where he near the edge of the mat, keep, kept those feet in very smartly and got his two. Yeah. We've got a current that score of four to nothing, Brent Booth. That bottom man's really got to keep active, otherwise he might get a, a uh, stall warning. But not only the bottom man, the top man is working. Yes. Seems like these heavyweights, they'll give them a little more latitude on that yeah, than correct. the lighter weights. Yeah. Because that's a lot of weight to move around. Yeah. Brent Brent's getting into a pin move here, yeah. and as I mentioned, he's very close to having 100 nice. career pins, and it, I think yeah, it's looking like he's, he's going to get it. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, Dow takes that one. So we're back to it. We are. Uh, we're at a tie team score, 18-18. Again, the chess match will continue. And uh, our 103 is now we're gonna start over. So we'll, we'll see a little more action on these lighter weights. Um, the Chemics are sending out uh, Connor Shelb. He's a freshman. Uh, he, he's 93 pounds. He's given up a little bit of weight, but uh, overall he's got a 10 and 10 record for, the, for this season. Very solid freshman record. Dow sends out J.J. Sweet, who's a senior and has been wrestling at 103 for four years for Dow High. Very strong, fast kid. Both people, both wrestlers looking for hand control. 
back to their feet. Kind of doing a good job of defending that with a two on one. Nice sweep back in on a single. points for Dow. Take down now. Kind of got to work on hand control, getting back to his base. JJ has been a uh, Saginaw Valley League placer a couple of years during his career, so he's he's a good solid wrestler. Yeah, he's really strong. You can see that in his build. Yep. Connor also plays soccer for the Chemex. He's got a lot of youth experience. He's, he's come up through the, the Midland Pride and then went to the Midland Thunder through the community center. A number of these kids on both sides uh, have experienced wrestling for the Thunder. Yeah, it's a great program. It's almost to his feet. JJ's got a, ch a, 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 we have a chicken wing in. Potentially dangerous. Not sure if I quite agree with that call, but the ref is there in much better position to call that. Able to see it better than we can. Yeah. Caution on Dow. Score 2 nothing, And we've got a team score of 18-18 right now, so. We knew this was going to be close. We, it's all part of the right. excitement. Might come right down to the very last match. Tries to try an inside switch. Keep switching, got to keep moving. And he gets got his one, so we got two to one. And on a single, JJ with a bundle. And he's got to keep circling. He's got a whizzer. A little surprised he called that too. I looked like maybe he hooked the ankle. Chemics, chemics are going down. We've got a four to one score with JJ Sweet on top. They're a strong wrestler in that top position. JJ trying to get that three quarters. Connor doing a good job of fending that off. Yeah, he's doing a good job of that hand control, keeping it. He's on his feet. He can create some space and get a one-point escape, but JJ brings him right back down to the mat. Single. He's got to get his knees underneath him. Connor doing a nice yeah, job he here. Step over this and not get thrown over backwards. He's going to get a nice three. job. So that gets it to four to three. Ref calls out of bounds. A little over halfway in this second period. Another tight match. I guess it's hard to be impartial when you're watching your own son wrestle sometimes. Tell me about it. <laughs> it's a good starting match. That's, uh, I don't know how this was actually going to go. Connor's got a hammer lock. Nice job of working that. He's looking to thread the needle. He 
that throw of it. JJ's back on his feet. Kind of sprawling. Coach shout, Doyle shouting to JJ to... Two reversal, and we're getting good reversal. Two points for Dow, time is running out. Exciting match. Yeah, very. A lot of back and forth. Such a contrast from the heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, a lot more action. Third period. Score eight to three. Led by Dow right at the moment. Going to a neutral position. There's a tempted shot. JJ spins behind for two. Connor gets an escape. So we're back to 10 to four. Lots of action still going on. Out of bounds, back to neutral in the center of the mat. Connor's running on the leg. They're pushing that head down around. Got to keep your head up. One point Jim escape. Lots them back up. So we got 12 to five. You're in on a quick shot. 12 to six. And an additional two more points awarded. One point escape. It's 14 to seven. Shoots again. Coach Doyle wants that extra point to try to work for a major, it looks like. Yeah. And two, there it is. Hunter's got to do a little bit better job of setting up his shots. There's one escape. Very high scoring match. More what you see at these lighter weights. Yeah. A lot of action. They got some fast motors, both of these kids. Kind of shot again. He's got a circle. He's got to keep hands. They're pushing their head down again, looking for a bundle. We've got seven seconds left in this match. And a good match. Victory. Good match, good match for the 103 pounds. A lot of excitement in that one. So that'll make, that makes the score 22-18 Dow, and then I believe Dow's gonna be avoiding this next one. They don't have a 112 pounder. Well, this will be Lauren Revord. She is a, a freshman, ninth grader. She has a record of nine and two for this year. Uh, she also plays soccer for the Chemex. Uh, she has a 4.0 GPA, and she's gonna get the void. Six points for, for the Chemex. She's got youth wrestling experience as yes, well. Yes, she does. She yep. The assistant coach, and... Jason Revord, that's, that's uh, his daughter. He has both children who are twins, uh, Lauren and Daniel Revord, on the team. And they, they have been well coached and have had some great success and still are having great success. Okay, it looks like there's some decisions being made on who's going to come out at 119. Looks like it's going to be Alex Noe, another freshman for the team. Uh, he's having a record uh, for this year of eight and five, so that's not not too bad. Yeah, not bad. Uh, he is a cross-country runner, uh, and he's also 
uh, swimmer, diver. He likes to dive. And he also plays golf, so he's, uh, he's very active. And it looks like Dow voided that one as well. I thought they had somebody at 119, but must not have made weight. <laughs> Here we've got one of the best wrestlers in the in the duel, in Mateo Diaz. Mateo Diaz, he's a, he's a senior. Uh, he is a, he's a very strong wrestler. His record this year is 20 and 0. Uh, he is he has made it to the he's a state qualifier. I'm sure this year he's really going to look to improve that that mark. And he immediately gets the takedown. Dane DeLong is a sophomore. This is his second year wrestling. And second year wrestling as a varsity wrestler as well. Mateo's got this cradle locked up. He's looking to elevate his leg. And that's going to establish the pin pretty quickly. Yeah, Mateo's just one of, he's just a solid wrestler. He's Very good. Three, he's, he's, five years in the youth, nine years in total. Um, just, I expect to see him go deep into the state tournament come yeah. March. So now at 130, we've got Jacob Knight from Dow. He's a second year wrestler, actually wrestled for Mount Pleasant last year, and his family moved over to Midland, and now he's uh, been wrestling at 130 for Dow. He'll be facing Daniel Reward, who is another freshman. Uh, he's having a really good season so far with a 10 and 7 record. Thinks he'll do track in the spring. Also, just just a vast amount of wrestling experience from the youth on up. Daniel's coming out very aggressively, showing a lot of energy. Nice on a single, he's in deep, elbow deep, he's got that. He should be able to take that down for two. Daniel Jacob well trying to work back up to his feet. Daniel looking for a cross wrist, maybe. Out of bounds, we'll go back to the center in the base position. Blood time, it looks like. Both these guys showing a lot of energy so far. This, uh, this past weekend, uh, or this upcoming weekend, Midland High is going to be going to Warren Woods, the Invitational on the 13th, uh, the, while the JV Chemex will be at the Meridian Tournament. And their next league meet will be away at Mount Pleasant, facing Mount Pleasant and Arthur Hill on January 17th. Um, and Dow is going this weekend to the Michigan Duels at Bay City Western. Uh, typically, there are a lot of strong teams at that uh, tournament. And then next week, they will be back home against Bay City Central and Saginaw Heritage. Yeah, that should be a good duel as well. Now both both these teams have tough uh, tournaments on Saturday because I know that Warren Woods Tower is is a very tough tournament. You know, this might be a great time to say that uh, earlier in, in the day we had this we had the opportunity to both Rod and I talk to both of the coaches and interview those. Um, and we asked each, we asked them just some, some relatively easy questions, um, and uh, with that we could we could take a take a slight break and go to that and show you that interview now. Hello everyone, I'm Rod Martin with uh, MCTV, and I'm here with Coach Dennis Doyle of the Dow Wrestling Team, and I've got a few questions before tonight's match. First of all, Coach. What do you enjoy most about coaching? Well, for this year, um, I, I've always maintained that uh, coaching my sons has been great, but getting to know their friends and getting to know the, the people that they hang out with uh, is even be a better part of that. Um, I've known most of this team since they were six, seven, eight years old. I've coached a lot of them in, in baseball and football and in wrestling, so I uh, definitely enjoy working with them. 
um, after they've grown and matured and now that they're at the high school level, um, having, after having watched them develop through youth uh, sports. My next question is kind of similar to that. What do you enjoy most about this particular team, this year's team? This team, um, you know, they've been through, some of them, uh, three head coaches now in three years. Um, and so for some of them, that's pretty rough. And they have definitely adapted well. They've uh, bought into what Coach Coble and I are trying to do um, and what we're trying to build. And uh, they're buying into the team concept where I think a lot of uh, misconceptions about wrestling is that it is an individual sport. And we're trying to get them to buy in that it's a team sport. And so far, they're doing that. Wow. Good. And my final question for you, Coach, is what does your team have to do tonight to win this duel against Midland High? Well, we definitely have to get bonus points where we get wins. And, um, you know, they've got some great wrestlers, and uh, we have to avoid getting pinned. Uh, and it, that sounds very simple, but um, we, we match up very well. You could, uh, you could probably write this up several different ways, and every way is going to be a close match. So we have to get bonus uh, points in our victories. Sounds good. Thank you, Coach. Right, I appreciate you. it. Good luck tonight. Thanks. Hi, I'm Chris Shelb here at the uh, MCTV uh, duel against Midland High versus Dow Chemics. Uh, Coach, I just thank you very much for your time. I just have a couple hey, quick no questions. Um, sure. My first question is, is what, what do you enjoy about coaching wrestling? Uh, I guess what I enjoy most is not necessarily the wins or the losses. Um, I hardly pay attention to those things. It's just watching guys kind of put their all into something because it's, it's a sport that just forces you to. You can't do this 50%. You have to give it your all. Uh, so watching them kind of accomplish things they, they never thought they could um, or break through and beat somebody they didn't think they could before um, and just kind of con converting those things into life lessons as well. Just that you see when kids put their all into something like wrestling, it, it translates to the classroom, it translates to the work life, it translates to the home life um, and just watching them become overall better men and better women. Excellent. Great. Thanks. Um, second question is, is, is directed towards this team. Sure. What do you enjoy coaching about this particular team compared to years past? Uh, this particular team is the first team that I've had that has only had me as a coach. Um, so I have a lot of seniors on this team, guys who have really bought in. And just watching how far these guys have come, many of these guys who have are closing in on 100 wins started and got one or two freshman year. Um, just kind of watching that full growth and, and the amount of leadership that we get. I don't have attitude problems in the room. I don't have character problems in the room. I don't have laziness problems in the room. And then it's all due to these seniors that I have, um, guys that have really bought in over the last three years and, and put so much into this team and into this sport. And, and watching the, the program I took over several years ago was in a woeful state. Um, and to see us coming in and we having a really good season so far and consistency seasons, consistently good seasons over the course of the time here. So uh, just getting a chance to spend one more year with these guys um, is definitely something that's Excellent, excellent. Uh, the last question then is uh, what does this team need to do to beat your crosstown rival tonight? Uh, tonight and going further, we just have to be consistent across all 14 weight classes. Um, we've had duels where we definitely rely on our seniors, but we have a lot of guys with a, without a lot of experience. And sometimes we get guns blazing from them. Sometimes we get shock and awe. Um, we need to come out guns blazing all 14 weight classes. Uh, from every single person that steps out on the mat tonight. So um, to beat Dow, it's, it, they're, they're up and coming. They've got a solid coaching staff that's really put, put the time in um, to these kids, and we're going to have to come out. I think, I think we're the better team, um, but we, just, we can't let guys hang around and keep duels close. we just got to open it up and take care of business tonight. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, Coach. Good luck, and uh, okay, keep everybody safe. Yep. Looks like we're still dealing with blood. So again, maybe we can talk about again that criteria for uh, team scoring. If uh, an individual gets a pin, it's six points. A forfeit or a void is also six points. A tech fall is where the opponent obtains 15 points, uh, an additional 15 points over their opponent. That is uh, a, considered a tech fall. That will be five points. And then a decision where it's just a win can, can be three points for the team. So that's how our team points are established.
each match has has three two minute periods and if we're still tied at the end of that or if there is an even score we go to an overtime for one minute and depending on what happens in that over minute or that one time over minute we over time we can go to two 30 second overtimes and that's where it really gets exciting looks like they've tried to get the blood stopped they'll bring the wrestlers back out to okay the as it stands now, it's two to nothing. Daniel Revord over Jacob Knight. About halfway through the first period. Coaches are still uh, giving the last minute bits of advice. Unfortunately, that is kind of part of the sport. Yeah, typically you'll see some blood time once or twice during a duel. Daniel with a nice takedown again. Jacob trying to work to his base. Got a cross wrist ride. Now he's got double arm bars. Wrestlers are to their feet. Back to the center. This is uh, the fourth year for Coach Mike Donovan. He's doing a great job with the program. Has high hopes for each wrestler. He wants them to do well. He's not so cared, so much cared about the individual wins as long as they're improving. He also uh, is a uh, freshman football coach for the Chemex. He's always had a co very competitive team with Midland since he's been here. Is, this is his fourth year, you mentioned? Fourth year, yeah. Yep. Yep. Dennis Doyle uh, Dow is a first year coach actually, but he's got a lot of wrestling experience. He's been a youth wrestler or youth wrestling coach for many years. And he also coached at Jefferson Middle School. Yeah, he, he knows a lot of these kids. He has seen them, knows them, coached them. Yep. That's one of the things he mentioned in the interview that he really enjoys seeing these kids mature and how they've progressed over the years. Yeah. Jacob trying to finish a... We might have blood time again. Okay. Uh, Mike was uh, a recipient of the 2016 Valley Coach of the Year. It's a pretty prestigious award. Absolutely. I know tonight they said they were going to try something a little bit different and then they were going to quiz the audience and have a little trivia. I think you mentioned that's the loons announcer. That's uh, I, I believe that's what I heard. Okay. The, that voice sounds familiar from the baseball games. So, you know, when we have a crosstown rival, we bring out the best. Absolutely. OK, that, back to the action with a score of four to two. Midland ahead. And a sprawling, sprawling. And a good job of staying Wendy. center. And end of the period. Dow's choice, they chose bottom. This is a competitive match. Yeah, this is a close match here. Oh, caution on Chemex. Just a little overzealous. Easy to do when you're ready to go. Absolutely. Jacob with a stand up, trying to get that point. Right to his feet really quickly. Daniel bringing him back down to the mat. And Jacob trying to get up again. Daniel trying to get that half in. Working on that cross wrist again. Two on one. Back to their feet. And 
Ref calls it out of bounds. So we'll go back to the center. Let's see if Jacobs tries that stand up again. And he does, but Daniel's ready for it this yeah. time. He locked that arm. To his feet, and there's a one escape. Nope. He re-engaged a little too soon. Yep. I thought for sure that had been a one-point escape, but instead it's a two-point reversal. So we've got a tie match at this point, four to four. About halfway through the second period. Daniel doing a good job of trying to keep hands. Again, it's such a crucial part of this sport. Absolutely, that hand control is big. Great, great attendance tonight. The crowd is very engaged tonight. This is uh, also senior night for the Chemex. Daniel's close to getting, no. Oh. And Jacob gets back behind, resets. 10 seconds left in the second, and we've got it. Uh, Daniel's really got to keep moving. The Chemex got to keep moving on the bottom if he wants to try to get an escape out of here. And we're going in with a tie score into the third period. Choice to Dow, and they choose down. set. Top man is on. Daniel's Daniel with a standoff. Let's see if he can spin and get that point. Jacob takes him back to the mat. Daniel's back up. Like both wrestlers are getting a little winded. That just means they're putting a lot of effort in. Yeah, absolutely. They both expended a lot of energy in this match. Still at a 4-4 tie here. You know, I did I did get word that the announcer tonight is Jerry O'Donnell. He's a he's a longtime media professional. Okay. It's great to have him here tonight. Yeah, his voice adds a lot of excitement yeah. to the atmosphere. For sure. I hope our voices sound just half as good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both wrestlers are looking pretty gassed right now. So the other match tonight. Uh, Ooh, we got a locked hands violation on Jacob, so that one's gonna hurt. That's a one free point for the Chemex. So that puts Daniel ahead five to four at this point. A minute 30 left. Still a lot of time for both wrestlers. One point was awarded now for a stand-up, so they're, they're going to start on their feet. And, and a nice takedown by Daniel. Yeah, right on the edge of the mat. Yep, kept those feet in and got his two. Nice move. Jacob's got a little over a minute to make something happen here. Exciting, 130 pound matchup tonight. Absolutely. Out of bounds. Both coaches doing a great job of encouraging their, their wrestler to keep moving. Daniel trying to get that half in. About a minute left. And he's got a half. Both wrestlers working hard. And no. Out of bounds before an escape is called. Looking for a switch. Jacob was looking for a switch. 
Down to 40 seconds. Dang has got an arm bar on the left side. Trying to yeah. run that over. And a half. He could be a little higher on the head. Now uh, Jacob could be in trouble here. Yeah. Definitely got some back points there. Still in a halfway decent position. He has a chicken wing. But he's got to be careful here. And there's going to be a two reversal for Dow. Jacob's got about eight seconds left to try to make something happen here. And Daniel seals it. Nice match. Yeah, that's a that was a great match. Yep. Good job by both those wrestlers. Yeah, 11 to 6 was the final score there. All right, so now we're going to be moving on to the 140, I believe. No, one, 135. 135, excuse me, yep. 35. That matchup should be another exciting one. Yeah, on. it, I think it looks like Caleb Studebaker from Dow. And Kinder, we call him. Kinder for sure, or Kindero, but we call him Kinder for short. Uh, Clinton, he's a he's a senior this year, record of 19 and six. Saginaw Valley third place last year. And Caleb Studebaker, he is a second year wrestler, outstanding football player. He was uh, as a sophomore brought up to the varsity this year and, and played very well. Yeah, he looks good like he's athlete. Got a good physique on him. Kinder in on a double leg. On his ankles. Kinder, if he could get to his butt, that would be a better position. Now, if he could just swim over. Caleb Bork trying to work for a stalemate here. Yep. Kinder gets his Looks head like out. He's working his way out, Kinder. Really close. Doing a good job of trapping that head, and there should be the two. He's got a Turk already established, but out of bounds before he could get anything on his back. Kinder's, Kinder's choosing a neutral, giving Dow one point. So two to one here. Caleb doesn't have a lot of experience, but he's very athletic and he's one of those wrestlers that will try a lot of things. Very aggressive. Well, a lot of this sport is, is, is aggression. It's, that'll get a long way. It, it absolutely will. The coaches can teach you some technique, but you got to have the heart. And the natural ability certainly plays big. Looking for a knee pick. I was looking for a knee pick and mm -hmm. out of bounds with all the action. And I know Kinder's a very solid wrestler too, as well. I saw him finish second at the Freeland Invitational, which is a tough tournament. Yeah, he's having a good year. He, he's, he's done well in the past. He's looking to get another two if he could pop his head out here. And Caleb tried that low ankle right off the whistle and then it kind of backfired, but then he still ends up getting the two. Yeah, that was that was a nice job by Caleb. Now Kinder, he's got to move from the bottom, make something happen. Ooh. That's probably gonna be yeah. an illegal throw. Yep. The reason that was illegal is because uh, you have to have your knee, the, the wrestler that's doing the throwing has to have their knees hit the mat before the other opponent. So, so one point will be awarded for an illegal move. Coach is making sure that Kandaro's okay. Yep. With the onset of more and more concussion awareness, we have to be careful with that. And that's a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we need to keep all our kids healthy. So we got a 3-3 tie at this point. Three seconds left in this period. That's 
And now we'll move to the second. Dow's Midland deferred. Dow chooses down, bottom position. Pretty equal match so far. Caution on Kinder. When you're in a close match like this, it can be hard to wait for that whistle. Absolutely. To our feet. Oh, an additional caution to Kinder. Now he's got to be a little careful. Couple of quick guys here. That was an excellent switch attempt and great escape. Dow gets the one point escape. Kinder working on that left elbow, trying to pass that, create an angle. Kinder does have a very good fireman's. He, he, he should use that more often. Mm -hmm. uh, looking for. A little turmoil. Coaches mm -hmm. wanted something different, and the ref called it out of bounds before before anything was established. Kinder was in pretty good position with, with whatever you want to call it, a cow catcher, truck driver. A lot of these wrestling moves have a million different names depending on who you ask. Well, and it's, it can be interesting with the refs. Some refs will call it sooner than others near the edge of the mat. Yep. Intriguing match going on here. Yep. Back and forth, back and forth, a lot of hand fight. Both staying active. Kinder in the front headlock. There's not a lot of room to work right there, though. And out of bounds. Now 40 seconds left in the second period, four to three. Dow really needs this match. They do if they want to. Kim has got a really nice crawl. His laces should be mm -hmm. down though. Mm -hmm. Out of bounds. Out of bounds again. again. 16 seconds left in this very tight match. Dow's heavy on the head. Head ear to ear, not ear to ear, head to head, which is what we like to see. Caleb trying to finish off. And on a nice single. And time expires. This Back. one's a dandy. Yeah. Dow chooses down. Finish up this third period. Both wrestlers looking tired, as they should be. Yep. They're both very close match. To our feet. Looking to try to get that to his hip, break the grip, and then get away. Dow still has that leg, so. showing a sign that no change. And we'll get some back points here. Little Coach is just asking to keep the ref on his toes, honest. No points awarded for Caleb had him a little too far off the mat. Yep. Kinder on his feet. Again, trying to break that grip. And trying to get that important escape point. point. Escape. Looking for a switch. He's got it in. And one point escape. One escape. So we got a tie game here. One point, no two point. Wow, that was a close one. But. One minute left. Yeah, it's a good match. 
Absolutely. A couple of competitive guys. Definitely always more exciting than when it's a really close match. And you're looking for a slide by, or a shuck, I should say. Oh, another one point escape. Now he's, Kamek's he's got to really do something. Nice little move there by Caleb with the, the trying to finish it. Kandaro doing a good job. Kandaro may turn this into a reverse. Caleb's really Take hanging them. on to that leg. Kendra's got him flat. He's, he's in position where he could. He gives really him the two. Problem. He's got the two. Six to four. Five seconds, Five seconds left. left. Wow, what a good match. Yeah, excellent. Both wrestlers putting their heart out there. Kendra's got to give up one, not two here. As, as the saying goes. Yeah. He did give the one. And good match. Time. Yeah, excellent match. One of the best of the night. All right. We're going to move on to our 140 weight class. And I'm thinking uh, Nick Norris for the Chemex is going to be coming out. And Jim had gear on. Nick is a junior, record of nine and seven. He also is uh, on the varsity cheerleading and does track with the pole vault being his forte. I think next year he's gonna, in two years, he's gonna join the Air Force. And for Dow, we've got Julian Maldonado. He is a first year varsity wrestler. He's been wrestling for about three years now. Okay. And he's got a 14 and three record so far in his first varsity season. So he's doing quite well. That's excellent. Dow in on a, on a single. Uh, Nick to his feet, but two points has been established for Dow. Yeah, well, that's, that was a caution. Yeah, and the ref saw it, called it. We'll start back over. Julian's a very high energy wrestler. Yeah, you can tell that. He's, uh, he's got a leg in, looking to Turk. Gonna try to cup the head. Break that plane in 90 degrees for his back, which he's very close to obtaining. Switch to a half. If he would straighten his arm out, that would uh, that would help that move. Nick's got to keep his elbows in. Uh, that was a little bit better movement. Now we're on our feet and one point. We got a two-one score about halfway through the period. Ever important hand fighting with these two going yeah. on right now. And Nick is a very good athlete. He's uh, it's very flexible. That helps Julian him trying to come up with that leg. Nice whizzer. Nick's got to get his hip back. And he's got a leg. That was an excellent job by Dow to reverse mm. that situation. Back points, refs counting, Nixon. Julian's trying to sink that reverse half. Tough spot right here. About five seconds left for him to fight it. I and he does. Good job, I don't think they're gonna get the pin there. So we got a 7-1 score. Going into the second. second period. Chemex are down. The base position. 
And there's an escape, escape for Nick. That was good hit movement. Good job of hand fighting. Julian getting that way, oh, yeah, trying Julian to. Just had that single again. Passing the elbow. Again, it's so important to try to create these angles. Makes that aggressive wrestler so, so much easier. Oh, headlock attempt. Now, this is going to be close. And is he going to come off? And he comes over with it. Comes up with it. Now, Nick's got to chase that leg, push that head down. Got to keep active. About a minute left, and that's a hard place to be. Yep. Showing his flexibility. Yep. He is on it. It's a tough spot, but you got to keep wrestling. If you can fight it out for 50 seconds or so, you're still in the match. So he's doing the right thing. If he can hook that leg, or if Dow, if Dow gets too high, you can clamp your hands around him and rock him the other way and try to roll out of this. Doing a better job of bellying out. Yeah. It's definitely harder for the bottom man, but the top yeah. guy's hands are, he's working hard to keep that too. Got the pin. And got the pin. That's a lot of time to have to fight that yeah, off. That's tough for any wrestler. Team score, 42 to 28. That's going to be Good your final duo. score for tonight. Overall, some very good wrestling from both teams. Uh, I, not some of the matchups I expected to see, but uh, all in all, still very good, very successful. I'm sure both, both coaches are going to be pleased. Um, uh, I, I would like to thank you, uh, Rod, for assisting me tonight. This was this was a lot of fun. I've never done this before. I, I don't believe you have either. I, so, I haven't uh, either. I've been... ho hopefully we didn't butcher this too bad and, <laughs> and the people at home kind of can understand what was going on. So I had a great time. Uh, I do wish that both teams uh, have success for the remainder of their season and whatever's left in their individual tournaments. And... Uh, and uh, I, I'm sure if they can all stay healthy that, that they will have a good rest of the season. I expect to see both these teams do well the rest of their seasons. And uh, we may see these two teams at uh, uh, team districts. Yeah, that there is which that possibility. Would be, that would be a lot of fun. Yep, because it would be another great matchup, especially if, if everybody's healthy, because I know you have some key people that were, were not able to be on the mat today. Yep, I look forward to that one. Hopefully that one will happen. Yeah. Now, uh, I want to thank MCTV and uh, my cohort here, Chris Shelb. Uh, first time I've done this as well, and I, I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, and I uh, hope to maybe do it again sometime. I'm, I bet you they'll probably tap us again next year. You just never know. <laughs> uh, we'll, both, we'll both still have sons on the team, so I'm, yeah. I'm thinking we'll probably be here again. Sure, excellent. Mm -hmm. um, some additional information from the MCT network. If, uh, if you'd like to see or, or catch some other high school sports on MCTV this winter, MCT volunteers and staff will broadcast the Midland versus Dow hockey on February 7th and the Midland versus Dow boys and girls basketball on February 9th. For more information, visit the city of Midland, uh, all one word, and mi followed by city of Midland dot gov backslash mctv for more information again the coverage for this meet is being produced by mctv volunteers and staff if you'd like to work on shows like this one please call 837-3474 again that was 837-3474 or visit the mctv temporary office in the upper level of the uh, grace a dow memorial library you can learn more about MCTV at also the that website cityofmidlandmi.gov backslash MCTV. Uh, also, you can follow uh, MCTV on Facebook. Um, other than that, I believe that concludes our 
our uh, tonight's events. Uh, both teams do have one more match to to go through tonight, and again, those will will both be competitive, and uh, I'm sure both teams will, will will do very well for the rest of the season. That concludes this evening's broadcast.